Alright, time for the NPC guide for My Magic 7. I'm going to be going over all of the NPCs that you can get in the My Magic 7 game. Uh, the Bard and the Diplomat are not available to be recruited in the game, so I'm not going to be talking about those. Of course, uh, there aren't any houses in the game that exist, so you can only get NPCs from... Uh, areas on the map, so, uh, and the higher level NPCs, you can only get in areas uh, like Tellurian Forest, which is probably the easiest area to get them. Areas like Ar Arathia and Harmondale, you can only get the lower uh, cost NPCs, so just a, a tidbit of information there. Um, now let's get on to the NPCs. Starting off, we have the teacher. A lot of these are similar to MM6. Costs 300 gold and takes 3% of all gold you find, and they, it gives you a 10% bonus to experience. Uh, like I said, in the 6 guide, you can pair this with an instructor, get a plus 25, or you can get plus 20 with the scholar because the Dollar works uh, with experience in this game and that's a pretty nice bonus you can get some extra levels but like I said uh, a lot of the the levels that you get are gonna be from quests and in, later on you're gonna find that you're not gonna get as many levels from this experience bonus but it is still a nice bonus to your levels get some more points into dark magic etc so I put them at A tier next we have the duper uh, duper uh, it's just like six it costs 200 gold and takes 2% of all gold you find and you it increases the merchant skill by eight points and your reputation is decreased I checked this and you lose prices in shops when you're low reputation, but the duper obviously balances out with uh, the extra prices. I don't think merchant is as good. Merchants are as good in seven because there are a lot of spells, and you can't just get a lot of spells and get a lot of levels immediately like in six so you are gonna and plus there's a lot of ways you can get a lot of gold very quickly so I don't think uh, merchant is as good but it's still very good to, uh, uh, to get things get good prices on uh, items and, and whatnot so I put them at B tier not as good as in MM6 though. The next we have the Master Healer. Uh, they cost 5,000 gold and they take 50% of all gold you find. Uh, like in uh, like in 6, if you have two of them you can't get any gold aside from quests. Um, they heal your entire party uh, to full health and heal all status effects including death and eradication. Um, I don't think master healers are as good unless you don't have a cleric because if you have one then you can get protection from magic preservation and you're not going to be worried about death status effect at all so it and the healing is also not as good because uh, you have the, the healing from a generation and whatnot is going to be uh, pretty fast on its own. You don't need a master healer, so I'd put them at C tier. They're they're really only good if you don't have a cleric with grandmaster body. Next we have the prelate. The prelate um, costs. Um, uh, yeah, two thousand gold and takes 20% of all gold you find and gives you 4 point bonus to self, magic, body, mind, and spirit 
Um, if you're not going with a uh, light magic and you have any melee, this is pretty good for the bonuses that you get from haste and um, well, not haste, uh, heroism and uh, bless. If you have, I believe, the initiate, which would be the plus three, you're getting plus seven, so that's plus seven, which is pretty good. Um, it's not great uh, in terms of damage, but uh, also you get bonuses to your healing spells, which is pretty good. Uh, your base heal spell is going to be a lot better, but obviously. Uh, you, you're not really getting all that much bonuses. Uh, it's just making you, you, your healing's a little bit better and your power cures maybe a little bit better, although I don't think that matters. And if you don't have light magic, then your buffs are going to be a little, a little bit better. So I put them at B tier. Not great, but they're pretty good. Next we have the Alchemist. Alchemists cost 400 gold and they take 4% of all gold you find and they give you unlimited magic item repair. Hardened item uh, makes it so that you don't really need to worry about items breaking it and there are also not very many monsters that break items anyway so I put them at C tier. Uh, if you don't want to get repair then they might have some use if you don't want to buy with hardening, hardening items but aside from that not very useful. Next we have the Spellmaster. Uh, they cost 2,000 gold and take 20% of all gold you find and they give you a four point bonus to the elemental school so air, earth, fire, and water. They're not as good as spellmasters in 6 because they don't give you a bonus to dark magic. Uh, the air magic and so on is nice. It can give you better sparks so when you're fighting undead then you'll, your sorcerers can do more damage. Uh, I don't think it's all that great though. The, d the dark magic is just so powerful, and it, the elemental magic is still good, but you obviously want to be using dark magic anyway if you're going dark path. Um, if you're going light path, then um, you're, uh, you probably get more damage from melee. Uh, well... I mean, it really depends. Um, I'd say um, on Light Path, I'd put the Spellmaster at S tier because uh, Elemental Magic is going to be uh, your primary mode of dealing damage, but on Dark Path, uh, they're useful early on because you're going to be using Sparks in the early game before you get Dark Magic, but uh, as soon as you get Dark Magic, they're not as useful. Y you can deal with, again, Undead easier. But it's not gonna give you very much benefit, and and you know you have uh, Robert the Wise as well, which um, can't be affected by shrap metal. But I would still put them on at A tier for the Dark Path, and then. I put them at A tier for light path, uh, S tier for light path because that bonus that you're getting f to sparks is going to be really good. 
it's going to be like, you know, the Sparks is going to give you like a plus over plus 60 bonus if you pair it with the Mi Mystic, which is going to be the highest damage bonus. Um, if you have more Sorcerers, then that's going to be a lot more damage. Again, it really depends on what party you go with. Um, or if you have a druid, then it's going to boost their uh, melee damage as well with sparks. So I think that works. Uh, S tier for light path and A tier for dark path. Um, although you can really make a case that... Um, What's the boost you're gonna get from uh, light magic? Up next we have the Windmaster. Windmaster costs 2,000 gold and takes 2% of all gold, gold you. F I mean 20% of all gold you find and it casts fly for two hours once per day. Uh, Windmaster makes the early game very e uh, much easier and allows you to get a lot of shit, a lot of treasure really fast early on. You can loot clankers, you can loot a lot of areas around the map, get a lot of gold really quickly. Uh, unlike in s 6, you don't have any um, way of getting fly early on because of the limitations you need to get promoted first. So, uh, you're going to be going longer without Fly, so having the Windmaster is going to be really good in the early game. Once you get Fly, it's not very important. They don't really do anything, obviously, so for that, I still put them at A tier, just like in 6. Really good early on, as soon as you get Fly, kind of useless. Next, we have the Porter. Porter's cost... 100 gold and take 1% of all gold you find and they make the cost of food one food less uh, when camping when resting uh, to a minimum of one like I said in 6 a lot of air uh, resting is going to cost 2 food usually so it is going to benefit in reducing food again I don't think that's very good you can get food in taverns although the taverns don't stock as much food, at least not until later on, so uh, you can make a case that it's beneficial, but not really, so I've put them at C tier. Uh, very limited use, but I guess it is a little bit beneficial, but not very much. Next we have the Sage. The Sage is a new NPC. Uh, it costs 700 gold and takes 7% of all gold you find and they give you a plus 6 bonus to ID item and ID monster. If you want ID item boost, you can just get the Scholar and it gives you unlimited ID item and identify monster is complete shit. It doesn't do anything for you. So the Sage is RP tier. Literally completely worthless. No reason to get them whatsoever. Now, speaking of which, we have the Scholar, which is 500 gold and take 5% of all gold you find, and gives you unlimited item identification and a plus 5 bonus to experience, which is actually implemented in the game, so you will get that experience bonus. Scholars are really good, uh, especially if you don't want to bother putting points into ID item, although Again, um, ID item, you can get a, a fair amount of items that boost your ID item, so you don't end up having to put a lot of points into it. Um, it's good if you want to save skill points and just be able to ID anything without bothering putting the points in, but i uh, put them at A tier just like in 6. The experience bonus is nice, but it's, uh, like I said, uh, uh, later on you're not going to notice the experience bonus as much, so I'd put them at A tier. 
you know, good, uh, useful um, MPs to have in most cases. Next we have the cartographer. This is just like six. Um, cost 200 gold and takes 2% of all gold you find and cast a wizard's third eye spell at expert ranking at all times. Like I said, unless you don't have wizard eye uh, available to cast in your party, this NPC is completely worthless. So I'll put them at C tier. Uh, you only use them if you don't have any way of casting air magic. And even then, there might be better NPCs to get. Next we have the tracker. The tracker costs 200 gold and takes 2% of all gold you find and makes all map crossings two days faster with a minimum, up to a minimum of one day. Uh, like I said in the six skills guide, or the NPC guide, uh, since you can't get lower than one, it always costs five days. Well, I guess that's not true. Because there are some areas that you can travel that cost ten days. But that is entirely dependent on what angle that you travel the area. If you go, like, north instead of west or something like that, then it's going to be five days, so... You can avoid that actually. So, I think there was, there might have been seven days though, I can't remember. I, I think it might have been seven days or ten days, but regardless, uh, you can get the five days. Um, and uh, you can get the Explorer and the uh, Pathfinder to get to one. So you don't really need the tracker, so I'd put them at RP tier. Up next we have the Psychic. The Psychic costs 400 gold and gives you 4% of all gold you find. Gives you a plus 5 to Perception and a plus 10 luck. Perception's completely worthless. The luck bonus, again... Uh, luck is kind of nice to get resistances but it's not going to be, be giving you much of a benefit plus you know you have like day of the gods pedestals and so if you pair this with a uh, chimney swoop you're getting 30 which maybe with a day of the gods pedestal you might be able to get to 100 not really all that great I put them at C tier they they do give you a positive benefit but it's not very much so C tier for the psychic. Up next we have the guide. The guide costs 100 gold and takes 1% of all gold you find and makes rap map crossings one day faster. Like I said with the um, the tracker uh, you don't need this NPC if you have the explorer and the pathfinder so I put them at RP tier useless. Up next we have the pirate which costs 500 gold and give, reduces boat travel by two days, increases gold by 10% and reputation is decreased by one full category. Like I said this reduces uh, merchantile uh, uh, bonus or merchant uh, uh, stuff selling in shops basically um, like I said in six pirate is completely worthless you get the same abilities from a factor if you wanted the boat crossings you could get uh, the sailor or the navigator you don't need the pirate for anything they don't do anything they are a detriment to your party they are RP tier Next we have the Tinker, which is 200 gold and takes 2% of all gold you find and gives you a 4 point bonus to disarm. Like I said in 6, if you don't want to lose all the gold that you're getting from uh, a burglar and the reputation loss, then a Tinker can be a nice um, 
alternative, I guess. Give you plus 10. Uh, still need uh, one point to, with a locksmith to open most of the chests, but uh, I guess that could be uh, kind of useful. I put them at C tier. Only get them if you're really worried about prices and you want to open chests easily. Aside from that, there's no reason to get them at all. Up next, we have the factor. Uh, they cost 500 gold and take 5% all gold you find, and they give you a 10% bonus, at evening out to 5%. If you get this with a banker, then the math is a little bit different. I don't know exactly, but you are getting a net bonus in gold. Factors are not really all that great. If you want more gold, then the banker is just fine. The factor not really going to give you all that much. I put them at C tier. Next we have the healer, which uh, t takes 5% of gold you find. They cost 500 gold, and they cure your entire party to full health. They don't remove any status effects, including unconscious, which I don't remember, actually, if, if, um, if you regenerate. Uh, if you have a generation on, if the, if your unconscious characters that are healed automatically wake up, but it's kind of the same deal. You just do, use it to heal your party to full health. But the healing in My Magic Seven makes this these uh, healing NPCs kind of irrelevant because you probably don't need it. Your regeneration is going to heal you just fine. The healer's not going to help you very much, so I'd put them at C tier. Up next we have the Fallen Wizard, which costs 2,500 gold and casts Hour of Power, I believe at Master, for a duration of 6 hours. So that's giving you Haste, Day of the God, wait, to Haste, uh, um, Bless Heroism. Stone skin and shield. Fallen wizard can be okay on dark path, in the sense that it can. You don't have any ways of casting our power, but the bonuses that you get are going to be very limited. It's not going to cast very, give you very much, and uh, it's you can probably just cast the individual spells. So you're not getting very much of a bonus, and they do take up a lot of your gold for something that they don't really, doesn't really help you all that much. Um, if you like the convenience of being able to cast haste, I guess, um, that might be nice, but um, they are obviously not very useful on light path, especially since, well, you can get them in Tularian, so I guess you can use them in the early to mid game. So, uh, but again, the bonuses are not very good, so I put them at uh, C tier. They'll give you something, but it's not all that great. Up next, we have the expert healer. Cost two thousand gold, takes twenty percent of gold you find, and heals. Your party to full health and removes status effects except for dead stone and eradication like the other healers. They're made irrelevant with the Grandmaster body magic and uh, having preservation, so they're not all that great, so I put them at C tier. Up next we have the Arms Master, which takes 3% of all gold you find and gives you a 2 point bonus to Arms Master, which really isn't all that good. I mean, you think about, if you, if you have an, you can get an Arms Master with a Weapons Master, that's plus 5, so you're getting plus 5 damage and hit. If you have Grand Master, then Arms Master, then you're getting a plus 10. That's a little okay, but not 
really all that great to justify in my opinion, so I put them at C tier. Not really all that good. Next we have the cook. The cook. Um, makes one food per day up to a maximum of 14. They cost 300 gold and take 3% of all gold you find. Now, the food in this game is... Uh, the taverns don't stock as much food, especially early on, not until you get to Nyon. So, you might find that you get more benefit out of this than in 6, but it's obviously not very good. I guess I'll put them at, uh, well... Well, if you really want the food, uh, you probably, well, it really depends uh, on how much gold you want to spend. Uh, you, the chef does the same thing, but um, the cook costs less, so... I put them at C tier. Almost useless, but I guess there's not enough uh, food in this game, especially early on, that you actually can get some use out of them, other, unlike in s uh, 6. Next we have the Mystic. His stick is the same as Spellmaster, except it's a three bonus, so bonus, three point bonus to elemental, air, earth, fire, and water. Cost a thousand gold and take ten percent of gold you find. Compare this with the Spellmaster, then you're going to be boosting your air magic by plus seven. That's pretty good in boosting your sparks. That's a lot better on Light Path, where you can't get dark magic. On Dark Path, it's not as good. It's better early game up until you get dark magic and then it's not very relevant aside from getting a bonus when fighting necromancers or liches so or in Robert the Wise as well so I put them at S tier for dark uh, light path and A tier for dark path yeah Next we have the Monk. The Monk uh, costs 500 gold and takes 5% of all gold you find. Increases your unarmed and dodging skills by 2. Um, the, uh, the Monk is going to get some extra armor class, like, I think, plus 6. And a plus 4 to damage, so kind of mediocre. Uh, kind of like the weapons masters, so I put them at C tier. You're gonna get a bonus, but it's not very much. Next, we have the trader. Trader gives you a four point bonus to merchant skill for all your characters, and they take 1% of all gold you find. Um, the duper is giving you a reputation penalty but it, the bonus is that you get from the, the merchant is going to be way better so uh, there's not much reason to get the trader because there's not really any downside to getting just a duper and a merchant if you want to get better prices so I'd put them at RP tier they're actually completely worthless because I think the only negative of reputation that good reputation is the prices are more expensive, but the duper makes up for it with the bonus to merchant skill. So, RP tier for trader. Up next, we have the Piper. Piper is 300 gold and takes 3% of all gold you find. Cast the heroism spell for two hours at master ranking once per day. Like I said. Uh, if you don't have any light magic or spirit magic, 
this will give you a little bit of a boost. I think it's like plus five. Not very good. That's basically it. C tier NPC. Next we have the Apoth... Sorry, Apothis Carrier. I don't know how to say it. Um, um, they cost 600 gold and take 6% of all gold you find. And they give you an 8 point bonus to Alchemy. Uh, I don't think Alchemy is very good. Uh, aside from... Uh, Maybe Hardened Item, which you don't need to worry about putting points for that. Uh, you can get your potions pretty high uh, power, and maybe if you don't have a Cleric, then that might be useful in healing. Or maybe you want to use, you don't want to go back to town, and you, you want to heal your spell points, get your spell points up. Uh, that might be beneficial, but... Reagents are limited resources. I don't really like alchemy, but uh, if you want to play around with that, then uh, th this NPC, I guess, could be pretty useful. I'd put them at C tier. They do have some use, but there are way better NPCs you can get. Alright. Okay. Up next, we have the Squire. Squire is 600 gold and takes 6% of all gold you find and give you a bonus to armor weapon skills by 2 points. So, like I mentioned in the 6 guide, that mounts to 2 armor class. If you have a shield, that's a little bit more, but still not very much. And then uh, some bonuses to damage, and that's basically it. Like a plus 2, usually. Not very good. C tier in PC. Only giving us a tiny little bonus. Not for much reason to get them at all. And next we have the armor. Armor costs 200 gold and takes 2% of all gold you find. Like I said, you have hardened item in this game, so you can harden all your items and you don't have to bother getting an NPC to repair your shit. So I put them at C tier. Not very good. Especially when you, uh, when you can't even get all three kinds of item repair, so. Next we have the Enchanter, which costs a thousand gold, takes 10% of all gold you find, and gives you a plus 20 bonus to all resistances, including air, earth, fire, water, body, and mind. Again, having the resistances is nice because you know, there's a lot of offensive damage in this game. Uh, it's going to give you uh, bonuses against Titans, Devils, uh, you know, those negative effects from, uh, you know, Death Gaze, etc. Uh, if you have Day of Protection, the Enchanter isn't as good, obviously. Maybe good early on, but uh, obviously Day of Protection is going to be way better in terms of giving you um, resistances. So I put the Enchanter at B tier for Dark Path and C tier for the light path because as soon as you get day of protection then well it's not completely worthless but it's not particularly good either so yeah I, th I think that's pretty fair up next we have the sailor the sailor um, costs 100 gold to recruit and they take 1% of all gold that you find and they make travel in a boat faster by two days the maximum is seven days to travel so you can pair this with a sailor and a navigator and get a minus five that's as low as you can get I'm pretty sure so there is benefit to that if you want to save time um, and time is actually 
it does matter to some degree because there are quests that are timed, like uh, Judge Gray dying. There's some quests you can't do after he's dead, so uh, time does matter a lot more than at six. So there might be some benefit to using travel reduction in NPCs, but generally speaking, it's not going to be all that great. So I put them at C tier. Up next we have the chef. The chef uh, costs 400 gold and takes 4% of all gold you find. Makes two days of food per day for a maximum of 14 days. I think the the gold bonus that you get, I mean the gold that you that you lose, uh, is probably worse than the extra food that you get, but. Um, you can make an argument that the plus two is better, but then you can also wait for the sh the cook. So I just put them at C tier. They're they're almost worthless, but there's not enough food in in uh, taverns early on in seven to where uh, the maximum of fourteen actually. Uh, is less likely, you're less li likely to get there, so C tier. Up next we have the Instructor. Instructors cost 700 gold and take 15% of all gold uh, you find and give you a 15% bonus to experience. So you pair this with an Instructor and getting plus 25. That's going to give you uh, some decent bonuses. If you're when fighting a lot of monsters, you'll get some extra levels, but uh, the higher you get, then the less extra levels you're going to get. So I still put them at A tier along with the teacher. Up next, we have the chimney sweep. Chimney sweep is 200 gold and takes 2% of all gold you find and gives you a 20 point bonus to luck. Um, like I said, with the psychic, uh, the luck bonuses you're going to get is not going to be very much but luck is does have a positive benefit so it is uh, you're getting something out of them unless you your luck is really high and you're not getting any bonuses but I'd still put them at C tier along with the psychic not completely worthless but pretty close next we have the horseman which is 100 gold and takes 1% of gold you find makes stables uh, time two days faster with a minimum of one per day like I said with the travel NPCs very uh, like I said with the sailor uh, very limited use but if you want to save time then they could have some worth so they're at C tier I'm next we have the banker the banker costs a thousand gold and takes 10% of all gold you find and gives you a 20% bonus to gold so that Averages out to 10% bonus to gold that you find. Obviously, getting money is useful, but um, you're not going to need gold as much as in uh, as in six. So it's also it also takes a uh, it's a slower grind to get the the gold. So. I put them at C tier. I mean, uh, I put them at B tier still because uh, the the gold bonus that you are getting is going to be pretty good. So, but uh, not you're not going to be hurting for money as much in this game. So, especially in the early game. So, put them at B B tier. Next, we have the initiate. Initiate. Uh, costs a, a thousand gold and takes 10% of all gold you find and gives you a three point bonus to self magic so body mind and spirit you pair this with the prelate you're getting a plus seven that's gonna give you a little uh, bonus to buff a plus seven and your healing's gonna be a, lot, a little bit better I put them at B tier the heal extra healing is nice but you the self magics aren't aren't really going to be you're not going to get very much from them being boosted, and even if you don't have light magic, 
the plus seven isn't all that great, so B tier for the initiate. Next we have the navigator. The navigator is 200 gold and takes 2% gold you find. It makes boat travel three days faster, like I said with other travel NPCs. It, you can use it effectively to reduce time, but not much use out of that. I mean, out of beyond that, so they're C tier along with the other travel NPCs. Next we have the locksmith. Locksmith is 300 gold, it takes 3% of all gold you find, and gives you a 6 point bonus to disarm traps. Pair this with the burglar and you're going to be able to open most of the early game chests. So, B tier uh, NPC, if you don't want to get a thief and you want to just get a knight, you get a knight. I think you do have to actually have the disarm skill, so they, they don't work if, if you just have clerics or sorcerers, but if you have a knight and a burglar and a locksmith, you can open most of the early game chests. So, B tier NPC, kind of useless once you get to like the mid game, but uh, fairly useful early on. Next we have the chaplain. Chaplain is 200 gold and takes 2% on gold you find. Uh, and they're basically the acolytes um, in 6, but uh, the acolyte is different in 7. Uh, but the chaplain, it takes the acolyte's place in that it gives you a bonus. It casts a blessed spell for 2 hours at master ranking once per day. Like I said, with the... Um, the piper... Um, the bless isn't going to give you much, it's just going to be a plus 7 to, uh, no actually it's going to be like a plus 5. So not all that great, but if you don't have any way of casting any bless, then it's going to give you a little bit extra damage, so C tier. Next we have the weapons master, weapon master gives you uh, three point bonus to arms master skill for all characters. They cost 400 gold and take 4% of all gold that you find. Uh, like I said, with the arms master, uh, the weapon bonus isn't going to be all that great. You're just getting a plus three to damage, maybe plus six if you have grandmaster. Uh, not very good. I put them at C tier. Next we have the Gypsy, uh, Gypsy uh, costs 100 gold, I believe, pretty sure it's 100 gold, yeah, and they take 1% of all gold you find, and they give you a bunch of shit, uh, reducing food cost, uh, plus 3 merchants, and they decrease your reputations, so uh, they're worse traders, and traders are, I've talked about, being useless, so the gypsies are even more useless. Uh, gypsies are RP tier, just like in 6. Up next we have the Watermaster, which is a thousand gold and takes 10% gold you find, and is able to cast Waterwalk Spell for 3 hours once per day. They're an inferior Windmaster. The only reason you would get them if you don't want to spend the money, the extra thousand gold, and you don't want to lose the gold. You can use them to go to Clankers early on, I guess, to get the... Uh, the chests in Avli. But if you... You can get Water Magic. And that's like... A like it's a thousand gold to get water expert and then get the water walk spell it's gonna be like close to a thousand so it's there's barely any point of getting the water master at all unless you don't have anyone that can cast water magic so just for like a little bit of saving gold uh, you you could use the water master I, I'd put them at C tier which may be too high but maybe you wanna cross water and not pay extra money. That's basically the only reason you would get them that I can think of. Alright, so up next we have the Acolyte. The Acolyte 
costs 500 gold and gives you, f and is, takes 5% of all gold you find, and gives you plus 2 bonus to the self's magics. Um, if you want to boost, boost your self magic, you should get a, a prelate and an initiate. Unless you want to save gold, there's not any reason to get the acolyte. I put them at C tier. Um, no reason to get them at all unless you really don't want to pay the extra money. So that's the only reason you would get them. Up next we have the scout. Scout is 300 gold and takes 3% of all gold you find. Gives you a 6%. Six point bonus to perception. I've talked about perception being completely worthless in s in seven. Aside from maybe getting being able to loot uh, rings from fireplaces, which you can get at one. There's no reason to get a six point bonus. RP tier, NPC all the way. Up next we have the fool. Uh, just like in 6, they cost 100 gold and take 1% uh, of all gold you find. And give you a 5 point bonus to luck, uh, which is 5 is completely, almost completely useless. And you can get a chimney sweep and a psychic to get a better luck bonus. So there's no reason to get the fool. They are RP tier. Next, we have the Gate Master. Gate Master costs 2,000 gold and takes 20% of all gold you find and casts the Temporal Spell and Master Ranking once per day. This isn't actually true because uh, you can teleport in hostile areas with the Gate Master. You can also cast, you can also use the Gate Master while you're invisible and not disable the invisibility, which is kind of a weird uh, exploit. Um, like like the winning gate masters in uh, six, they're very useful early on. Although they're not quite as useful because you have to enter areas first before you teleport, so you're not going to be getting as much benefit from the gate master. Uh, you can also use them to if you don't have. Uh, Grandmaster Water Magic, they're going to be really nice in being able to teleport around areas. Or if you don't have Water ma Magic at all. Um, and teleporting while invisible is kind of useful. Um, but since they, you only unlock areas, uh, you only can teleport areas that you unlock, uh, they're kind of limited in how good they are in uh, 7 compared to 6. Uh, uh, they can obviously save you some time um, teleporting around, but uh, once you get a town portal spell, they're not really all that useful. So, I'd actually put them at B tier. They're not quite as good as in. Well, nah. I, I think B is a little bit too low. I think I'm going to stick with A tier because they're still very useful uh, until you get um, water, um, master water, and even um, even if uh, and uh, especially if you don't have any water magic. And they can be useful in some cases, like I said in six. Uh, it's unlikely that your characters are going to be incapacitated the, because of preservation and the uh, and uh, protection from magic. But you might be in recovery time, so recovery, so you, they can still teleport there. You can teleport while invisible, so it does have some uses. So I'd still put them at A tier for that. Up next we have the Quartermaster. Quartermaster costs 200 gold and takes 2% of all gold you find. And makes 2 days less food when camping. I've already mentioned this before, 99% of the time you can just camp. You, you're able to camp in an area where it costs 2 food, 
the minus two isn't giving you anything because it's only going to be to one and you can get the uh, other NPC for that so I put them at RP tier they're completely worthless just get the I believe it was the tracker I can't actually remember but I think it's the tracker Next we have the Burglar. The Burglar uh, gives you an 8 bonus to disarm trap and stealing. The stealing is irrelevant uh, since it's useless and the reputation is decreased by a full category and they cost you nothing but they take 20% of gold that you find. Uh, obviously Burglars are very good early on. Uh, you can pair them with a Locksmith and open almost all of the early game chests with ease. Um, once you get to the mid game they're already kinda not very good so I put them at B tier. Uh, obviously very good especially if you have again you have a knight and you can use burglar and locksmith to open uh, just about any of the early chests so B tier Next we have the Apprentice. The Apprentice is 500 gold and takes 5% of all gold you find and gives you a 2 point bonus to all the elemental magics. Uh, if you want to boost your elemental magics you should get a Mystic and a Spellmaster. There's no reason to get the Apprentice unless you're worried about paying more money, in which case they're still they're okay with that if you want to save some money so they're going to give you a, a little bit of a bonus to your... I mean this the bonus to uh, like Sparks is still going to be pretty good, but it's obviously inferior, so I would put them at C tier. Up next we have the Smith. The Smith uh, costs 200 gold and takes 2% of gold you find and gives you unlimited weapon repair. Like I said, with the uh, Alchemist and the Armor, there's no reason to get the Smith because if you worried about items breaking, you can just harden them. Uh, and there are less monsters that actually break items anyway, so uh, C tier NPC. Next we have the Hunter. The Hunter is 500 gold and takes 5% of all gold you find and increases your identify monster skill by 4 for all your characters. I can't think of a more useless NPC, to be honest, aside from the uh, neats that are in the MM6 game. Completely useless, I've already talked about it. I define monster, completely worthless. You don't need this guy to tell you where, what what monsters do, you can just go look it up. So, completely useless, just a waste of gold, RP tier. Up next we have the Explorer. The Explorer is 100, costs 100 gold and takes 1% of all gold you find and all tra travel times are reduced by one day. Like I said with the other uh, travel NPCs, if you wanted to reduce time, this is a pretty decent uh, NPC for that. You can pair it with another travel NPC, obviously. Um, aside from that very niche use, they don't really do anything, so uh, they're still C tier. Unless you're worried about running out of time doing certain quests, then there's no reason to get them. So, C tier. Up next we have the Herbalist. Herbalist costs 400 gold and takes 4% of all gold you find and gives you a 4 point bonus to alchemy skill. Uh, you can pair this with the Apothecary, uh, I believe. Uh, that's the alchemy NPC that will give you plus 12. Again, I'm not a big fan of alchemy, but if you were to uh, want to use it then you're gonna have a pretty high alchemy especially if you get uh, an item boost the item that boosts alchemy on top of it planker's amulet that's gonna be you're gonna have a really high alchemy skill so if you wanted to get alchemy you, you know good potions that heal a lot of spell points etc then you would uh, these NPCs are for you, but other than that, they don't really have much purpose since alchemy is kind of worthless. And the good potions, like I said, the best ones are ones that are not affected by increasing its power, like Hardened Item or the Stat Boosting Potions. So, C tier. And finally, we have the Merchant. 
Merchant costs 200 gold and takes 2% of all gold you find and gives you a 6 point bonus to Merchant Skill. You pair this with the duper and get really good prices. Again, like I said, uh, I don't think Merchantile is as useful as because there's not a lot of high price items you want to get immediately, but if you want to save a lot of money, then this is definitely good. I put them at a B tier, uh, along with the duper. Um, uh, obviously, you can save a lot of money, especially in the early to mid game. Although, it's rare that there's not anything that you like um, really need to like you know you need like the merchant to get uh, certain things it just makes getting uh, a lot of stuff more convenient so I'd put them at B tier for that okay I missed one by accident so you have the Pathfinder which uh, costs 300 gold and takes 3% of all gold you find and it makes map crossings three days faster for a minimum of one day so this is just another time saving uh, NPC you can tap this plus the Explorer and get a travel land travel down to one if you wanna save in game time uh, this is a good NPC for any other practical reason there's not much use of them whatsoever so they're, they belong at C tier uh, yeah that's basically it Alright, so I'm done with the NPC guide. Um, uh, I, I don't think I'm going to be doing uh, any more guides in the near future unless someone, uh, a bunch of people really want to see them. So I'll see you guys later.